we led an expedition four weeks down the Okefenokee Swamp. It's a very important source of water. We assembled a group of people from all over the world. I first like very much to be in sampling trips. From Germany, various universities around the U.S., Ball State University, University of Minnesota. It's extremely remote. Taking the normal chemical procedures that we do here in the laboratory out into the remote field. Into the swamp to uh, get our samples. The Okefenokee Swamp is unlike any other place I've been on this planet. You're deep in the swamp and you're surrounded completely by wilderness. Where I'm from, Shanghai, is like urban, you know, like there's nothing there that can compare to Shanghai. There's no internet, no self-service. It's basically like wilderness. It's lush, it's humid. It's mostly a cypress swamp and it's really very beautiful. It connects you with the nature. Abundant wildlife. There's always alligators around there. The American alligator, really common there. When you're paddling around, the water, because it has so much organic matter in it, it looks rather black, almost like a mirror when you look, look down in it. So, uh, and then you know that there are alligators swimming around as you're paddling. So it's a little bit disconcerting. I stopped counting at 50. They were everywhere. I never got comfortable with the alligators. Back in 1983, first sampling of Swanee River is very formative in the formation of our International Humic Substances Society. A guy named Ron Malcolm from U.S. Geological Survey developed a way of adsorbing humic molecules out of water and wanted to develop a large sample that he could distribute to scientists around the world to promote the idea of uh, further study of humic materials. And that was uh, back in 1983 when they did the first sampling. Mike Perdue, he had done several expeditions to the Suwannee River. We have done this several times in the past. I have been there with him in Suwannee River for three times. At the Suwannee River in Georgia, which is a black water stream with a lot of organic matter. The organic matter concentrations in the water are really high somewhere between 50 to maybe upwards of 80 or 100 milligrams per liter as carbon. And if you compare that to, for example, the Mississippi River here in Minnesota, it would be more like 10 to 15 milligrams per liter. What they were looking for was a blackwater swamp where they would have high dissolved organic carbon. They wanted water that was low in cations. The first step in the process at the Suwannee River is to set up on what we call the sill, which is an old uh, hydraulic structure, a dam structure. And the basic goal there was to collect the water to bring back to the field lab. The main thing that we do there is we lower a submersible pump over the edge of the sill. And slowly lower that into the water until it was submerged, but uh, not completely at the bottom. And we can't get too low, because if we get too low, all the pumps will pump all the mud out, and then it will really clock up the filter while not too high because it will suck up all the moving things along the river. We get a generator, get it started. We pump the water up to the top of the sill there where we're working and then we pass the water through two filters in series. A one micron filter which goes into a 0.45 micron filter. Uh, to remove particulate materials so that we can get the dissolved organic matter into these carboys. And we're just filling filling carboys. The color of it, it's very dark. It's somewhat a tea color almost. It's a, it's a brownish yellow, even when you pump it out through, through both filters. And then once we have our carboys filled, we bring those back to the field lab to do the subsequent processing. Lifting a lot of 20 uh, liter carboys of water onto the van, off of the van, into the, yes. There was a lot of heavy lifting going on. The field lab that we used was 
a connected garage. It's hard to imagine having a temporary structure serve us as well as that. The Okefenokee Swamp is a national wildlife refuge. Within the Okefenokee Swamp, the state operates Stephen Foster State Park, which has housing facilities. It's a very different setting to be doing large-scale water chemistry in. So the, the first thing that happens after we get the carboys back to the field laboratory is we drop the pH. We drop the pH to about two, and then that way the organic matter becomes, let's say, has a higher affinity for the resin. And so we're basically protonating the carboxyl groups and making the organic matter more neutral charged. And then in that way it sticks better to this DAX resin that's present in the columns. After we lower the pH, we uh, pump the pH adjusted solution through these DAX columns. Collect about 85% of the organic matter out of the river on the column. And then after the columns are loaded with the organic matter, we elute the columns by pumping upflow uh, with sodium hydroxide solution. And so what that does is then it basically desorbs the organic matter from the resin. Then we acidify that down to pH uh, 4. And then we collect that concentrated organic matter solution in other carboys. I've really never seen anything quite like that before. We did large scale chemistry in an open garage and our fume hood was really the fan behind us. It was a very practical, hands-on type of experience for me. Two undergrads working on our project, Daniel Chang and Jason Mann. They're both chemical engineering majors here at the University of Minnesota. Because I'm taking some lab courses and then the things they talk about is just like, oh, I did this before. And then, oh, it's easy to me. Just being able to be challenged to think about things in a much more concrete manner. They really learned how to do chemical engineering uh, in the field. So we were basically doing separations, and so we're taking organic matter from the water, collecting it onto a DAX resin columns, and then eluting it using a basic solution, sodium hydroxide. And so these are some of the principles of separations that they would learn in chemical engineering classes, and we're literally doing it in the field. We returned after about four weeks at the Suwannee River site back to the University of Minnesota with a van full of concentrated organic matter solution. The University of Minnesota is a large Big Ten University in an urban area. It's a large campus with about over 50,000 students. It's a major research university. It's in fact the major research university in the state of Minnesota. The U of M itself has a very strong chemical engineering program. Faculty at the University of Minnesota have played a role in the International Human Substances Society for many, many decades. In fact, uh, Paul Bloom was one of the founders of the IHSS. I was motivated to work on the Swanee River Project because I wanted to be able to spend more time with Paul Bloom. He's my mentor. He's also retired faculty emeritus. And this is really something that he's been involved with for a very long time. After we got the samples to the University of Minnesota, we put them in a cold room at 4 degrees Celsius, basically refrigeration temperature. We do have in here the raw product that was collected from the river. So my main task is focusing and working on the purification. The purification process involves actually the use of a lot of acid. The main goal from here out at the University of Minnesota is to do really two things. One is to separate the fractions of organic matter, so-called humic acid, from the fulvic acid. Uh, and so that step is done by dropping the pH to about one. And at that pH, the humic acid is no longer soluble and it forms what we refer to as a precipitate. The undergrad students are also helping out with the separation part. Then use centrifugation to separate the humic from the fulvic acid. And to get the precipitate to settle to the bottom of the jars. And we pour off the supernatant, which contains the fulvic acid solution. Then we just re-dissolve this humic acid uh, in a little bit of water, and now we have two fractions. We have a fulvic acid fraction and a humic acid fraction. Every day I am watching the whole process and look at the trends over time to see where we can improve our, the performance of our processes. Now the last step that we're gonna do here at the University of Minnesota is to remove all the salt from the solution. So we have humic acid and fulvic acid concentrates, 
But we've used, for example, sodium hydroxide during the processing, and we've used hydrochloric acid during the processing. So that introduced lots of sodium and chloride to the water. And so we need to get those out because we want a sample that is very high in carbon content and organic matter, but very low in salt content. And so the way we do that is to actually do a series of columns, and we use the DAX columns again in series with an acid column. And so the DAX column will help us get out the chloride from the water, and then this acid column will allow us to get out any sodium, calcium, any cations, and replace those with protons, which will then result in a relatively pure organic matter product with very, very low salt concentration. Final product goes again to the cold room. And the last step is freeze drying, and that involves hauling it to a commercial freeze dryer in Moments, Illinois, that's operated by Van Drunen Farms. The first step in that process of freeze drying was pumping the liquid onto trays, and the liquid formed drops, dropped into a vat full of liquid nitrogen where the drops froze immediately into pellets. And the pellets were then transferred by an auger into a container lined with plastic. And these pellets were then spread on trays. And they have these huge freeze dryers that you can actually walk into where they were dried in a vacuum. And we get the dried powder and send it to the University of Minnesota right here in this laboratory. A material that we produce here via the IHSS is that we, first of all, produce very high quality materials using standard established methods. Second of all, the advantage of using a material like a Suwannee River humic acid or fulvic acid is that researchers all around the world have been using these materials for several decades. And so there's a body of, of data out there using these materials. And so if a new researcher wants to, say, compare their data with somebody else's, a nice thing to do would be to, to run it with a Suwannee River material and then you have a benchmark with which you can then compare your result. It was a very practical, hands-on type of experience for me. I learned a lot in this trip. I'm just really glad that I decided to go and to also try to get a little more connected with the materials that are being prepared in our lab and shipped all over the world. We've been functioning both as a repository and a distribution center for humic materials and as a, a forum for scientists to come together to share their research results.